I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Uh, Jeremy Carlton is gonna be the first coach fired. Filk. Uh, I'm buying everybody around on this because <laughs> I, I just think that Chicago, it, it has nothing to do with everything else that's going on. But that team is just so bad right now. And they 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 overpaid mightily for Seth Jones. More on that in a bit. Um, to, to get him, and they gave up Adam Boquist and uh, the equivalent of two other first-round picks. And now you've got an overpaid $9.5 million defenseman who can't carry a defense corpse because he hasn't played well since the 2017-18 season ended in which he was playing near Norris caliber hockey. So um, you got that. Marc-Andre Fleury can't carry that team because the defense is just so bad. Obviously, this team is probably going to further fall into an even bigger tailspin with everything that's going on. And eventually it's going to lead to Colleton being fired. So I, I'm buying around on this. Which, by the way, the hard part about buying around on when I use that graphic is that we crush Anthony's head every single time the class is <laughs> That's all right. Anthony, go ahead. I don't mind two brewskis being by my face. Um, <laughs> Nobody I, you know, likes I was, that. I was going to go around, but then I thought about Montreal's situation and Ducharme. And, you know, I, I don't. I, He's I, got a I leash. Stay yeah. With the list. He's got a leash. Because Weber's, Weber's basically retired. And I know Weber's Price, gone. Uh, Price is gone. But, He's got a leash. But that's but that's still that's still a, 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 a you know a bad situation there. The wheels are falling off the bus. But um, yeah, I, I ultimately think it will be Carlton though. I mean, they're they're a tire fire right now. But the Montreal aspect kept me at beer. But I mean, it it could, it could very easily happen with Carlton and soon. You know something. It's I'm buying. I'm buying. Uh, I was trying to debate on it for a second. I didn't want to go around on it. I I just again speaking about a guy. That, what exactly do they do? They hang their hat on. Usually it's a shooting gallery in Chicago every single year. You got you go out. You spend the money on uh, Jones and you get Flurry. And so far they're they. I don't think they still led one second of a game this year. No, they haven't. They, they haven't. haven't. They haven't. They haven't let a single second. You, and you, you you improve your offense by bringing back Jonathan Taves, who you, you missed last year. And then you brought in Tyler Johnson, even though Tyler Johnson's not the 2015 Tyler Johnson from the triplets line. Yeah. You, you still thought that he could give you something to help out. But, I, the forwards can't get but the forwards haven't helped out the defense. The defense is a tire fire. And you have last year's Vezina winner, who's going to be, what, 37 years old? That's when – players start to decline and especially goaltenders it's harder on the body with goaltenders because constant up and down going into the butterfly going down to your knees that wears on you as a player so when you have an aging goaltender like that and a poor defense in front of him and just poor overall structure as a team in front of him that makes it 10 times harder on flurry flurry can't save them like he saved vegas because vegas actually had structure with gallant they got no structure in Colton in Chicago. It, it, and that's part of his coaching style, too. That's what's even weirder. But we're going to move on to, well, we're going to stay with Chicago. Seth Jones has one of the worst contracts in the league. Anthony? So are we Are we still, to, like, guys like uh, Louis Erickson and Andrew Ladd only have a year or two left? Are, are we still No. Are we still counting those no. guys? No, nope. no, because their their contracts are off the books at the end of this season, and you get to worry. You don't have to worry about them after that. All right. So if you if they're off the, I mean, yeah, yeah I guess you're talking. Jeff Skinner is definitely one of them. Jeff Skinner's um, probably the worst. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna go around. So because again, if guys like uh, you know Lucic and Erickson and Ladd are aren't counted anymore because they're ending in a year or two, then. Then yeah, I'm gonna say round that Seth Jones contract is gonna be one of the worst in the league for sure. Because you know, right? It's what he, it hasn't even kicked in yet. It starts next year starts and next the, year. Yeah, at the rate that he's playing, uh, unless unless he goes back to the Seth Jones of you know of 2017, 2018, and 18, 19, um, then it's 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 not gonna age well. 
Um, so I'm, I'm going to go round there. Uh, so, this this <laughs> round, and through, there was never a question of whether it was <laughs> anything else because there's no way that you can give someone like him 9.5 million to be an absolute dumpster fire as a first pairing defenseman on a team that lacks depth to begin with. He, he uh, Jeff Skinner's contract is probably the only one that's worse than his. And you want to talk about Darnell Nurse? Okay, Darnell Nurse got overpaid. We get it. I, I didn't like that contract either because it was only for one good solid season of hockey. But at least Darnell Nurse looks like a top pairing defenseman right now. Seth Jones does not look like a, a top pairing defenseman at all. He looks like a number four, number five. And in comparison, you have some of the better contracts in the league, like like Stephen saying here, Slavin, McKinnon, so on. I mean, you know, we talked about McDonough having one of the best contracts in the league for a long time while he was with the Rangers because he was making less than $5 million and he was a legitimate number one defenseman. But Seth Jones got to be a provincial selection for Team USA because of the now, now uh, – I don't even want – I don't even know the word to, to describe Stan Bowman now. Former that, GM? Yeah, f- I just former former GM. Wanted to play favorites and nepotism and hire his own there, obviously. But because – you know what? It's Seth Jones has just been brutal. He's been bad since that 2017-18 season ended. If you look at the analytics, they're awful. They're awful. And the eye test supports them too. So – this is going to be a real bad contract for Chicago for a very long time unless they find somebody to come in and help him out or they draft a legitimate top-pairing defenseman. But, oh, wait, I forgot. They traded a p- potential top-pairing defenseman away in Adam Boquist to get Seth Jones. To get Seth Jones, yeah. If we were playing press your luck, this would be a double whammy. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so I really want to say beer. I really do because I, I like Seth Jones as a player. And I think a new coach, and maybe even if they could just find him a, a better defense pair, they'll be fine. But I got to buy everybody around on this. As of right now, things are presently constructed. There is no chance he's, he's going to be able to do anything to justify that contract. Oh, boy, that contract. Um, the Pittsburgh Penguin play is unsustainable. Mr. Fakowski, I believe this one was yours. Yeah, uh, I'm going to buy around on this. Uh, I I don't see how they can continue to do what they're doing, and and they'll they'll have to start playing better teams. Tampa Bay, obviously, you've seen from their start so far that they've taken a hit. Nikita Kucherov being out hasn't helped them either. Um, but Pittsburgh will not be able to uh, do this. The <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, Brody. How do we LTIR Seth Jones for eight years? I mean, you could ask the Islanders about Andrew Ladd. I mean, <laughs> Lou, Lou might be able to help you with that. But, um, yeah, I I don't see how Pittsburgh continues this. Gentle is out. Carter's out now. Crosby's still out. Malkin's going to be out for, I think, at least another month or so. Uh, how do they – and now Latang's out too. So uh, how, how, do they, how do they continue to, to, to win games like this? I, I don't see how it continues. I, I'm, I'm saying round. Anthony. Round. Uh, I mean, you know, they, I, I, I still, Tristan Jerry, I think, is still not like a formidable goaltender. Um, yeah, they've had some success with their top guys out, but again, that, that's not really going to last once they really start to get into the meat and the potatoes of the season here. Um, and then, you know, again, I, I, I just, I think Jerry's going to, you know, reintroduce the true him, the true self soon. Um, and again, I know Crosby coming back will help. Uh, Malkin in a month will help. Um, but I, I still think this team's on the downward trend, despite you know the what we've seen here in the beginning of the season. Um, you know, they always say like American Thanksgiving is like the benchmark to where like if you're in a playoff spot, typically you end up making it, and you really see what teams are by that point. I think by that point, um, I think they're going to be much lower in the standings. Yeah, yeah, because the only team I think after American Thanksgiving that really surprised everybody was the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues, yeah. 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 Uh, there's only one reason why I'm going beer, guys, and that's who's got the most Stanley Cup rings as a coach in the Metro Division? That would be Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan, 
Yeah. So it's one of those moments where you go, I, I wish like my team had him as an assistant coach and then maybe promoted him. I don't know. Maybe he would have been our coach. Uh, no. with two Stanley Cup ranks. Don't know. We'll never know. But still, back to this. Uh, Mike Sullivan's doing a good job in Pittsburgh. I I know it's easy to do it without with Crosby on that roster, but you know this team that they, they've started out pretty well. I, they should they should drop off a little bit with all their injuries, but then once they get their guys back, look out for them. And no. yes, Anthony, I'm with you. Tristan Jari eventually is going to be Tristan Jari. You know, the one armed goaltender that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't know how to how to work a glove. Play baseball for a minute. So anyway, let's go to Motown. Lucas Raymond will be a Calder Trophy finalist. And you know, boys, I'm going to start it off by buying everybody around. I know we had our Calder Trophy guys that we were picking before the season. Mine was his teammate, Moritz Sider. Um, he's looking pretty good, guys. Can't, can't ignore that. He became the third teenager in Detroit history to score four points in a game. Can you name the other two? Wait, what, what, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Lucas Raymond became the third teenager to score four points in a game. Steve Eiserman. One. Third teenager. And the other player was a teenager that scored. You don't have four, to think that hard. Four points against Sergey Fedorov. Fedorov. Nope. Anthony. Lidstrom. Gordy Howe. Oh, so uh, I, I, that's, that's, a, that's a quite an impressive thing. Granted, he's got four goals of the season. Three of the four were in one game, but right now he leads rookies. Let's see if that is the case later. Anthony. I think round. Um, you know, I, we kind of forgot about him. Fourth overall in 2020, uh, maybe because he just plays for the Red Wings. But, um, you know, he was highly touted in his draft year. Um, and I think he's he's looked the part so far in Detroit. I mean, he's he's one of their best young players, aside from what Dylan Larkin and Tyler Bertuzzi. Um, you know, he's really also helping fill the void of Jacob Rana, who's out for a while with his shoulder. Um, and I think Raymond's going to get the playing time for Detroit. Uh, so unless he really kind of, you know, hits a wall, I, I don't think he's just going to disappear. And, you know, this rookie class, I'm not saying it's, you know, it's weak because you got guys like Zegers and, and Drysdale, um, you know, Cole, Cole Sillinger and, you know, Mace Paul, you know so you got, yeah. yeah, McTavish. So you got a bunch of guys, um, but I think he can hang with all of them, frankly. So uh, I'm going to go round um, and I'm fairly confident in that. Phil. I was teetering on this one and I was teetering between beer and round but thinking about it, I think I got to buy around. Like Anthony said, the, the, the ice time thing is huge, especially for a, a rookie. And and obviously we've seen this with Capo Caco and the Vitaly Kravtsev situation and Alexi Lafreniere and, and getting these guys in and getting them their minutes and, and proper utilization too is, is a big key. And Detroit seems like they're just – utilizing Raymond perfectly the, the 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 offensive zone start times are are in his favor they're not putting him in defensive roles or anything like that or or having the majority of his shifts start in the defensive zone which is big because you, you don't want to do that to a rookie and put too much on his plate they're just letting him go out there and also he's playing in Detroit there's no pressure on him to produce He's just going out there and playing hockey and having fun and just developing and proving himself. And that's what it should be about for rookies. They shouldn't have to bear the load of an entire franchise or organization on their shoulders right off the bat. And Lucas Raymond isn't going to have to do that there. That team's not expected to win. So I, I think I'm going to have to really buy a round on this. Anthony, one of the hazards of being Italian is that, if you notice, I'm always holding a pen, but it's also <laughs> I accidentally broke it. <laughs> as I'm playing around with it, because you need to, you need to have something pen? in your hands when you're talking in your Italian. Is that so. a chase pen? A what? Is that a chase pen from Chase Bank? Uh, no, I got it from a oh. hotel I was at last oh. or two years ago. Never mind. It was, about it was from uh, Barefoot Resorts in, uh, uh, geez, was that actually South Carolina? Was that uh, Arizona? I don't know. I'll, I'll look that up another time. But moving on, Andrew Margiapani is one of the top underrated players in the league Bilk. yeah uh 
I know we're, it seems like we're doing a lot of rounds and shots here with no little to no beers, but uh, I'm going around here. And I'm not just saying that because of his seven, you know, his six game start leading the NHL with seven goals. But this was a guy last year that on, that was on pace for 26 goals and 47 points. And he just, he doesn't quit on plays. He's a play driver. Um, he wasn't playing top six minutes for the most part. He was really kind of like a third liner. And even in 2019 or 20, uh, 1920, he was, he scored at, at a near 40 point pace then and almost had almost 20 goals as well. So this is somebody who's really been under the radar for the last few years. Um, I don't know if you could really call Alexander Barkov underrated anymore after he won the Selkie and, you know, he had a 90 point year a few years back. So Andrew Mangiapane is probably taking his spot right now. Probably the most underrated player in the league, in my opinion, at least. I put an R in there, didn't I? I called him Margiapane, didn't I? No, I think you called Mangiarpane. I think. Yeah, I, uh, or Mangiapane. Anthony, jump on in. Uh, I'm going to go beer. I mean, he's, you know, two two years ago, he had 17 goals. Last year, at 18. Um, he's got six, six or seven this year so far. Um so he, he definitely score and he brings some he brings some heaviness to his game as well. He's not afraid to mix it up. Um, he's a good piece for Calgary. You know he kind of supports Gaudreau and Monahan and Lindholm. Um, I think a lot of teams would would like him in the league. Um, the reason I'm not going round is because there's so many guys that I think have been doing it longer than him that kind of don't get the love that you know they they might they might deserve. Okay, um, but. but- they- Let's distinguish something though. Our, we don't. You don't have to necessarily be the best player to be the most underrated. That's true. I mean, that, I, yeah. I, mean, I agree with that. I mean, you're talking to a guy who's an Islander. I mean, I thought Franz Nielsen was at the top of this category for the longest time in his heyday. Exactly. That's so, what I'm saying. yeah, yeah. Which, uh, that's true. Which again, yeah, Jerome McGinley was probably the top of this category for the longest time. But when you keep saying a guy is the most underrated, eventually he's rated. I don't know how long McGinley was there for. McGinley, McGinley, what his it was, uh, probably I think his sixth season was the one where he won the won the rocket. The rocket, yeah. Did he, had, he, had did he share the rocket one more time after that? Yeah, two thousand one. Yeah, so yeah. I, and he wasn't really underrated for a long time. But if you knew I, anything I, about hockey, you would know that. Which, yeah. by the way, I'm going to beer, and uh, one reason why I'm going to go with yes, I would go with Sebastian Ajo. But again, yeah, same thing Sebastian too. Ajo. He's 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 the heir apparent to uh to uh Alexander Barkov. But the um I'm gonna go beer in there. I'm gonna actually use the words that that Phil said. Uh, underrated. I don't know if he's underrated. I think he's breaking out right now, which I think if he's breaking out, then he becomes underrated because people aren't gonna talk about him as he's breaking out. But that's just you know playing with that a little bit. And guys. We, we were talking about dirty play earlier in the day, but P.K. Subban is proof that the NHL is not hard enough on Slewfoots. Anthony, take it away. We're going to go round. Um, when he did it with Reeves, I, I had said, like, like, how he reacted, how he reacted afterwards, how, like, he seemed, like, generally concerned about Reeves, didn't really leave his side. I'm like, all right, well, clearly, you know, clearly that was an accident. You know, he didn't mean it. Um, but then – when I saw what he did the other night, it was basically a carbon, you know, a carbon copy to the, to the slew foot on Reeves. And I'm like, Oh, well now, you know, now it's kind of almost becoming a thing where, you know, it's obvious when you look back on, you know, the Reeves situation and, you know, Subban seems like a, you know, seems like a great guy. We all know about the charitable work he did with Montreal and, you know, he does a program. He did a program in, in Nashville with like blue line buddies where he brought in like a guy from the inner community and, you know, introduced him to a cop. And, you know, so he's he's a good guy. He does a lot, but that doesn't absolve him of kind of what he does on the ice. And I, I think it's becoming a little bit too much of a of a thing with him here with, you know, two slow, two slew foots in what, like a month, month and a half. Um, but, yeah, I, I think this is pretty clear cut. Um, that it's the round. And as far as in general, I think it is a dangerous thing that they need to really, I know they, they cracked down on cross checks. That was a focus on the off season. They pull more emphasis to call it. Um, but you need, 
you, you need to watch slow foots because it could be really dangerous because a lot of times the guy doesn't see it coming because you kick his leg out with your leg and you know before you know it you know he's on your back you could hit your head you could twist your knee awkwardly um it's a it's you a, if you stuck in the ice yeah it's a dangerous yeah. thing it, it, yeah I, it's funny you mentioned to hit your head that the thing that i was thinking of of it because i i've been slew footed before and thankfully we all have. I, yeah I, i'm pretty sure all three of us have but yeah. the thing i thought of was joe pavelski and how he had that bad fall in the playoffs a couple of years ago that yeah. led to san jose coming back winning that game winning that series against vegas but um <laughs> This is the the one of the worst plays in hockey. It's probably the dirtiest play in hockey, aside from I would say cup checking someone. For everyone who knows that is, it's a spear right to the uh, the cojones. I'll say but, it's even um, dirtier, but go ahead. I, I yeah, I would say it's dirtier too. But um, you you can't slap them. You can't slap PK Subban on a wrist fine like this. You've you've got to start making examples of, of players that do things like this. And, and really start cracking down on them. They're not hard enough on it. They're not. So I'm, I'm buying around. And if you're going to continue to slap players on the wrist, these things are going to continue to happen. And then someone's really going to get hurt in the NHL is going to be, you know, face palming again. Oh, we had to address that, but we didn't. And now we look like idiots. So, yeah. How about you start addressing it now? Well, Colin Campbell's still in the league's office, right? I believe he is. Yeah, and he's involved. Yeah. When he got involved initially, one of his players, Bill Berg, was a victim of a slew foot in the playoffs. So he wanted to crack down on slew footing. That's when he actually took over as the czar of discipline. I am not only going to buy everybody around, because as you're saying, and, and I'll, I'll go back to what you're saying right here, Anthony, The it's proof that the NHL isn't hard enough. They fucking rewarded him with a Norris trophy. Are you kidding me? There's only three things that are certain in life. Death, taxes, P.K. Subban, Stalufoots. Do I want this guy on my team? Yeah, for two reasons. One, big shot, and I know he can't Stalufoot me. I mean, I can't wait till he eventually retires and, and goes on and, and becomes a great personality for the NHL. But it's sort of like that thing. There's like a saying from bartenders where it's, Oh, I, he's a great guy. Just when he gets drunk, he's, he's a little bit uncontrollable. Well, it's like, you know, I'm a bartender, right? So in other words, my chances of being slew footed go up. It's like great. PK Subban is great. I would, again, I, I would take him to be the head of my organization in the heartbeat. I wouldn't want him on the ice because eventually he's going to get suspended or fined and slew foot people. Yeah. Okay. So what do you guys think? Um, PK Subban, slew footing. Is that is that all? Are, are we are we being too tough on him? I don't know. Are, are we? I, I don't I don't know. Seth Jones, Seth Jones, one of the worst contracts in the league. Artemi Panarin, are you worried about him if he's the New York Rangers? Are you worried about uh J uh, I almost said JP Parise? Zach Parise, if you're the New York <laughs> Islanders. Obviously not. Yes, may you rest in peace. JP Parise, who scored the first series clinching goal between the New York Islanders and the New York Rangers. Yeah, so Yep. yep. So, guys, put it all down in the comments below. Ooh. Uh... If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.